What's up, guys? I'm Salty Mike, and this is your Star Citizen Week in Review for December 4th, 2023. Now, 3.22 is on the PTU, and it's causing a little bit of drama with one of its features. That feature is Structural Salvage, and, well, we kind of know now why they changed the name from Munching. Also, CIG comes out and just tells it like it is in regards to Pyro, and it was awesome. All that and more on today's Week in Review. And as always, if this is your first week in review, this is where I take all of the official Star Citizen news each week, put it into one video, and share some of my opinions about it. I also live stream on Twitch, twitch.tv slash saltymike, every day about Monday, so I can get this video out to you guys starting at 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time. And I just want to say again, thank you for everybody who stops by from these videos, because you guys have been coming out a lot lately and saying uh, really nice things. So I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Also, in regards to that, the Answer the Call podcast is going to be moving to its own dedicated YouTube channel. Me and Kronzi, it's kind of become our thing. It's not just my thing anymore. So we're moving it to a YouTube channel. The link for that will be in the description below. Get subscribed. I'm going to be posting uh, the older videos uh, throughout the week and leading up into the new year, which is when we will do our first uh, live stream from on that YouTube channel. So check it out if you guys haven't yet. It's going to be a lot of fun. So with that said, we got some patch notes to talk about. All right, now 322 is in wave one on the PTU, and it is absolutely being rushed in. Unlike 321.1, not for a ship sale for us. They want to make sure that we have a decent holiday patch for once. Uh, we haven't had one in years, and I think this one might actually be stable. The wave one is very stable so far, so fingers crossed it stays that way. They also listed a few features not ready for feedback due to this rushing, basically. Uh, the new settlements and openable cargo containers so we'll touch on those a little bit um but yeah they're they're not ready just yet there's a lot of problems with them we're going to start out with structural salvage though which is the highlight of the patch and it's here kind of so let's start off with the good stuff since you guys all think i'm such a hater <laughs> basically they created buffer storage in both salvage ships 14 su on the vulture and 360 su in the reclaimer both are obviously subject to change the buffer storage can be filled before ever having to eject the box from the filler station so keep that in mind 360 SCU before ever having to remove a box from the filler station where previously it was one SCU at a time, right? It was uh, pretty crazy. This is the solution to how tedious the Vulture was. And it's an awesome update for this ship specifically, not necessarily the Reclaimer. You fill up and then head down to the station and empty it in your ship. One time, one time down the ladder and one time up the ladder. The filler station's also got an update on the Reclaimer and it's huge. It can fire out up to two 16 SU containers at a time. Also, crafting items now requires a new commodity, construction materials, which sells for around 12.5K SU at the time of recording. Uh, this is probably gonna change as well. Keep in mind, these were meant to be refinable materials, not this construction material. These are created by structural salvage. Uh, there are two modes for structural salvage, fracture mode and disintegration mode. Think mining here very similar St fracture laser and extraction laser same thing right uh two left clicks and you're done millions of credits and minutes again this is going to change uh for sure they've already stated it but it is the same mechanic as mining without any of the tactile feedback and maybe a tiny bit of skill added as well or thinking <laughs> at all um i don't expect this to be a major major like super difficult puzzle to figure out or anything it can still stay chill but it is so hands-off it's boring at the moment uh and people did not like the implementation it just like i don't I, I, and i gotta say i i just I agree with them almost 100 percent now people are being quite toxic toward the towards the developers no need for that constructive feedback is what we need and i made a video giving that constructive feedback on this channel before CIG responded to any of our feedback, which we'll get into in a moment. Uh, so check that video, guys, if you haven't yet. Now, I just alluded to it. The feedback thread was getting a little hot, so Torsten popped in to essentially let us know that they plan to do a lot more with this. And 
All they wanted to do was ensure that we had something in our hands with regards to salvage before having to do any major reworks. He also mentioned there being one thing that they want to get in for things to be a bit more involved. So we'll see what that is, I guess. Now, this put my mind at ease. Uh, but as I stated in the Answer the Call podcast, the Reclaimer and Salvage are these flagship features that you can't really mess around with. Uh, people spent years thinking about how they were going to interact with these systems, and there's no chance that this is how they envisioned it at all. CIG needs to do better by their backers overall in every aspect of the game, but these are the situations where there are really no exceptions, even as a first implementation in my mind. How many times did they raise the Reclaimer's price since it was first sold in 2014? And this is what they gave those owners as a thank you. Doesn't seem right or fair to me, uh, when the highlight of the ship was always its claw, right? So not using the claw for anything other than a mining beam is ridiculous to me. And that's my feelings. I hope they do better and we'll have to see. Continuing on, there was the player hair update in the patch. They added the 20 or so hairs to the PU from the Citizen Con demo uh, with more to come in the future. What did you guys think of mine? <laughs> the FPS weapon changes uh, also came in some from Citizen Con, some recoil changes, as well as a number of changes to weapons. The FS9 has reduced magazine. The Arclight pistol has burst. Uh, most laser weapons are going with burst now. The LH86 is full automatic, amongst many other changes uh, that will be in the, the patch notes there. They also added time to kill changes from Pyro that we had in the Pyro uh, preview, and they stated heavy armor, you will no longer die to a single headshot from a sniper rifle. I personally don't know how I feel about this. There's nothing more satisfying in an FPS game than a sniper headshot. So I don't know about that one. Let me know what you guys think down below. Mining balance, they lean the balance back towards prospector mineables for certain rock, rock types, which is really great. Uh, this was a much needed change because the mole was basically the only viable miner for some time. And then arena commander, uh, multi-crew arena commander modes, and it was really, really fun. I think it will highlight that turret health is a mess, but what a welcome change. I really, really enjoyed this. Uh, a few other things that might not really be in the notes. Uh, master modes test. There's a couple new ships that you can use, as well as one of them being multi-crew. Uh, the Vanguard uh, Warden, I think. So you can get in the turret and see how that goes. So super awesome. Feel free to check it out if you guys haven't yet. And um, yeah, it's still in wave one, so you might not be able to get in for a little while. So hold off and trust me, you'll get a better patch, I'm sure. Now, we did get a roadmap update, and they started out with release view, and that's really all they did. Uh, new derelict settlements are coming in specifically for Stanton, and yeah, there's a couple of them, and I enjoy them. I think that they're super cool, and I can't wait to see how they support them in the future. Um, also, Arena Commander maps. There's going to be Bloodshot Ridge and Maker's Point. Bloodshot is for all modes except for Racing and Pirate Swarm. Maker's Point is an exclusive FPS uh stormy map so i can't i don't know man being knocked down while reloading is by wind is just gonna be stupid i i i'm not looking forward to that map i'm just gonna say it and then again we spoke about arena commander multi-crew in the patch notes love it it's awesome uh last the gatat gatak sulin uh which was simply added in retrospect uh to the tracker so yeah no big deal there keep in mind this will likely be the last roadmap update for a very long time as jake responded a lot of moving parts are going on right now and the planning two months or so that cig does at the beginning of the year instead of continuing what they were doing at the end of the last one i never quite understood that uh, but because of this i always and will be skeptical of the plans that they shared at citizen con right because their plans were at CitizenCon. Now those plans are going to change. Uh, will they still stay holding steady this year? I don't know. Let me know what you guys think down below. Then for video updates, Inside Star Citizen to play in Pyro. This was a very simple show as it shared the behind the scenes of creating Pyro Playground. But there was one really important takeaway for people that I think they really needed to hear. With Pyro being an unlawful system, a lot of people have been experiencing spawn camping, ganking, however you want to phrase it. It's not fun, but it is a part of being in an unlawful system. There are a few sort of key puzzle pieces we are missing to sort of have the intended experience there. 
which are we need AI to be there and we need them to be reactive so they can see what you're doing and be able to help the players who are just trying to get out. We also need reputation. Reputation really matters to them. You don't have the UEE doing any kind of patrols. If someone is sat there uh, ganking people coming out, it gets to the point where Rough and Ready are that sick in you, you're not allowed at their stations anymore. You're not allowed to refuel there, land there, rearm. You go anywhere near it and they will shoot you down. You can gain and lose reputation with the gangs and they own various locations. Are you going to be able to go to this station because you've destroyed an entire settlement where Rough and Ready work? You know, you kill this person, how's that going to affect your long-term reputation? What you do really impacts where you can go and people's response to you. Now, I absolutely love to hear this as the location was meant to be dangerous and not for everyone. And people just can't accept that in this community. And they certainly can't when it's said by other people backers, right? Hopefully CIG sharing this will help people understand. That being said, we really need to get a very lawful system in so people who want a chill place can chill. Uh, I think it has to be the next priority when it comes to systems. Assuming next is, ne is next, because it probably is, whatever comes after that has to be a safe place. Let me know what you guys think about that, but I really feel that way. And then for other updates, we start out with a sneak peek. This is clearly the Origin X1 and it's cockpit. Personally, not interested in the thing at all, uh, but it does. That doesn't mean that it isn't cool. It looks really cool. Uh, Jumptown is back on Thursday and Friday. It came back. They ran Jumptown again and reposted a guide for anyone who needed that information. Siege of Orison is back now. They also reposted a guide on how it works. I hear it still has a ton of issues, uh, like bosses falling through the floor and stuff. Uh, I'm not even bothering with it at this point. For the Galactopedia update, the main post is about Luminalia, which is coming on the 22nd of December, and they give you a little history on it. I didn't know it was actually celebrated by the Banu, so that's kind of cool. Uh, other posts are from like some Jian lore, Spirit series, and the Nine Tales, and that'll do it for this week. So I thank you so much for watching, as always, guys. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, hit the like button. If you didn't, you know what to do, and subscribe for more weeks in review. Uh, but leave a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts on anything we discussed today, anything I might have missed as well. Uh, again, I am very passionate about things that are industry. So when they come in as not fun as they could be, I mean, hole scraping is more fun, okay? Uh, we could do better. And, and I was just hoping we could do better. And I am grateful that we have it earlier. Uh, so I kind of wish the only thing I would have said is give that feedback or warn us what's coming before it actually comes and i think people would have been a lot more chill on this uh, but that'll do it guys so thank you so much for watching this week and i will catch you guys next week